uh, emotional connection between you and these There's cats? A very emotional connection between me and these cats. Extreme. This is his deal right now. I mean, his whole deal is about just wanting petted and loved on, you know? It's just, they're so affectionate. Are these trying to mate? The Netflix show Tiger King brought plenty of attention to a still growing problem. People trying to turn giant wild animals into pets. Lions, tigers, bears, and more are still being bred, sold, and abused across the globe. For the last four decades, perhaps no one has done more to help the problem than Pat Craig. You want to carry the chickens? <laughs> I'll carry the chickens, sure. <laughs> Whoa, jeez. At the Wild Animal Sanctuary, 45 miles outside Denver, it's the tigers who are kings. What do you think? You want this? And just up and over. You know you do. Oh, yeah, nice catch. Their regular bounty consists of whole chickens and 20 pound burgers. Oh, yeah. Get it. You've got four full time drivers <laughs> whose only job is to run to Walmarts to pick up food right. for yeah. the animals. We actually have five full time drivers that go to almost 100 Walmarts twice a week. How so much food are we talking about? We're talking 100,000 pounds a week of food that comes in here for the animals. They eat a large chicken breast like it's a peanut. Yeah. <laughs> Along with two other locations, this sprawling 789 acre preserve represents the life's work of Pat Craig. How many animals now? We're close to 700 right now. It's a lot. Yeah, 700 lions, tigers, bears, wolves, leopards, so it's mostly large carnivores. How big do you want to get? Well, it's not about wanting to. If, we, if it was up to us, we'd like to kind of be out of business in the sense that the problem was solved. Oh, give us a rub. Yeah, come on. Craig got started when he was just 19, after visiting a zoo and being shown animals set to be put down. He decided he would try to find a home for them on his family farm and sent 300 letters to various zoos. He was soon inundated with requests. From that beginning, Craig's sanctuaries have grown to over a combined 10,000 acres, protecting 20 different species, funded entirely by private donations. They're really going. Yeah, that's, that's not even full throttle. When they really go, it's, that's him just kind of, you can see he's over there, he's not even standing up for it yet. He's, He's taking it half serious, but when they're serious, they stand up and they'll turn. And it's really cool when it's somewhat cold out because you see the breath coming out oh, as they're wow. born. It's really cool to see that. Do you have a favorite animal? Yes and no. It's kind of like your own children, you know. They're, they all have their different personalities. Lions are, are very family-based. They love to be together. They're very gregarious. They, but then tigers are very affectionate and in a different way, but more like individuals. and. Each one is very endearing for their own reasons. Many of the tigers we saw Craig and his team took in after the abuses they endured were featured on the infamous Netflix docudrama. My name's Joe Exotic. The only difference between my pet and your pet is mine have three inch teeth. The Tiger King brought so much attention to the issue of animals being mistreated. Right. Has that helped your cause? It has, you know, I, in the beginning, everybody was so shocked by it that we all kind of thought, well, maybe this is gonna be a bad thing. Um, my goal is always to reach more people. And I, obviously those shows and the timing of them with COVID and all that, there was 70 million people saw it in the first few weeks that it was out. And so for me, it was 70 million people that probably didn't even know the problem existed. So. When you saw the show, what was your reaction? Well, I, when we rescue animals, that's the people we see all the time. Here in Colorado, Craig tries to do things the right way. He can never create conditions exactly like the wild, but it's close. Oh, you're backing off, yeah. You know who's boss? Not really. That includes an aversion to tourists. You have visitors here, mm -hmm. but reluctantly. Yeah, um, I think that most people don't understand that all animals, it doesn't matter if it's a turtle or a dog or a lion or a tiger are territorial and even people are territorial. And so when people go to a zoo in the morning, before they get there, the animals are very calm. But when they come in, 
everybody coming in is a stranger and that's a threat to them and their territory and so I knew that for us, if we ever opened to the public, I had to solve that problem. I didn't want the animals to have that pressure. And so that was when we came up with the idea for the elevated walkway, because animals like this don't think of sky or air as territory. This is the longest elevated walkway in the world. The longest elevated walkway or footbridge in the world. And most people who come here make the whole walk? Yeah, that's three miles round trip, you know, and that's pretty, pretty good for a lot of people that haven't done a hike in quite a while. The first time we tried to interview Craig, he got called away last minute to rescue tigers coming in from Guam. His teams also recently completed rescues in Romania and Ukraine. He still tries to save them all. We still turn down quite a few animals every year. Is it tough for you to do that? Oh, it's, that's the hardest part is saying no, you know, because we're always working very hard to expand and do more for the animals, but there's definitely animals I have to say no to. If you weren't here, would these animals be dead or euthanized? Every one of them, yeah, we're, we're like the last resort for all these animals. We wanna make sure that nobody's gonna get euthanized or killed or whatever, and, and if there's another opportunity, then they should go there because we have more than we can take already, and so we wanna just take the ones that are down to their last day on Earth. It's an amazing place. Wow. And the fact that, you, that people can go there immediately be careful, I, well, the elevated walkway is careful, but, um, and see what he's doing. The education, I think, is yeah. why he opened it up to people so they can understand what's happening. Interesting choice of words. He said, so nobody will have to die. I mean, nobody. Yeah. Like, and the fact that, you know, I didn't, who knew that animals don't see sky, sky or something yeah. above them as yeah. being territory. That was just a brilliant. Um, epiphany. What a generous, generous heart yeah. he has to do it's what he's doing. A, it's his life. It's all yeah. consuming it for all him. Consuming. And, and it hurts him when he can't save yeah. an animal.